Hello everyone, welcome back to Faith Talks. Today I just want to take some time and talk to you about the importance of developing a mindset of victory. You know, many a times in our experience of life, maybe we have faced defeat, maybe we have faced losses, maybe we have felt that we have failed. But you know what, the word of God promises all those who are born of God a life of victory. First John chapter 5 verse 4, it says that everyone, every child, whoever is born of God, they will overcome this world. And this is the victory that I'm talking about. Victory is overcoming every stumble that comes against you. Every block that comes against you, standing strong and living in victory. And today, I want to give you a few points on how you can actually live a life of victory. One of the first things that I want to share to you is having a mindset of victory is by renewing your mind according to what God says about you. You see, many times when you go around, you are given these tags that you're not worth it, you're not good enough, maybe you will never amount to anything in your life. But the more you hear it, your mind is being accustomed to what people say about you, that maybe I'm truly not worth it, maybe I can't do it. But the word of God says that all things are possible for those who believe. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So according to Romans chapter 12 verse 2, do not be confirmed to this word, but be renewed. And this word renewed is the word metamorphia. It is a process of complete transformation. So we need to transform our mind according to what God says about us. You see, too long we have accepted what people, what culture, what our parents, what your friends, what your relatives have said about you. But you need to base your life on what God is saying about you. You see, God is calling you as a victorious person. God is calling you as a champion of faith. So we need to believe in what God is saying about us. And when we have this solid faith on what God is saying about us, we will see that our life will be a life of victory. You see, whenever God called anyone, for example, when he called Moses, he did not have the qualification to bring out an entire nation and take them to the promised land. Maybe he said, I faint, I murdered someone, and he would say, just all my life, I am just feeling like a mess. I have no victories in my life. But when he placed his life on the calling of God, when God called him, I have called you to be a deliverer. When he placed faith on what God said about him, he was able to lead the people out of the wilderness and bring them to the place of promise. Look at the life of Gideon. He was a weak, coward person. But when the angel of the Lord came to him, he said, now I'm going to transform your life. And this is what the word of God is capable of doing. You see, there are thousands of promises of God for each one of us in the word of God. So we need to base our life on what God says about us. I always say that. Every time you buy a new appliance, you get an instruction manual with it. And every time there is any trouble with your appliance, all you need to do is open the instruction manual and read it. And you will be able to troubleshoot any problem. Similarly, for a believer, for a child of God, the word of God is your instruction manual. And it comes with everything that you need to walk in victory. You need to function your best, walk in victory, living a sickness-free life, living a blessed life, living a life full of peace and joy. The word of God says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy, the Holy Ghost. And for us believers, for us people of faith, all of these things should be in abundance in our life. Amen. So today, what I'm trying to say is, you no longer have to live a life of defeat. You have access to a life of victory. And you need to know that all things are possible for those who believe. The word of God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So this should be a narrative. We need to come out of defeat and narrative of I am not worth it. I am not good enough. I can never do good things to coming to a place, maybe believe in what the word of God says and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The word of God says in Mark chapter 9, it says, all things are possible for those who believe. All we need to do is to believe in what God is saying and accept that as a fact. And 
as we place our life on that truth, we will see that our life will be backed by amazing testimonies of victory. And this is my desire that everyone under the sound of my voice will have amazing testimonies of how you can walk in victory. Maybe there are challenges that have defeated you for all your life. There are temptations that you've fallen again and again and again. But today, as you place your faith on what God says about you, you know every challenge has to bow down. Every defeat has to bow down. And you will come out stronger. You will come out victorious by placing your life on God's word. So remember the first thing, renewing your mind by what God says about you. And this is a very important point. And that is this process that we have to do daily, renewing our mind. And how do we do that practically? By meditating on the word of God. Joshua 1 it says, meditate on these things. Let them not depart from your mouth. This is what it means to meditate. Constantly fix our gaze on God's word. You see, God's word is the most powerful thing. As you focus and engage in the word of God, you will realize that your narrative is changing. Maybe you've thought defeat, but everything around you starts to change. Where you see problems, now you will see solution. So you will be a solution maker in your environment. Amen? And I believe I'm talking to a bunch of victorious people. I want to take you to the second point. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. You see, this is the highest form of spiritual warfare you can engage in. Many people think that spiritual warfare is going to the mountain top and binding the demons or doing all sorts of things. But the biggest spiritual battle you have is between your ears, in your head. And if you can win the battles that are inside your head, the voices of accusation, the voices of condemnation, that the devil... See, that is why Satan is called the accuser, because he has a habit of accusing the beloved ones of God. And that is why he's called the great accuser. So just as our thoughts can be used for victory, Similarly, devil can use our thoughts to speak to us and say that you're not worth it. You will never amount to anything good in life. So that is why this spiritual warfare that I'm talking about, we need to take captive of all of these negative thoughts. You see, the moment there is a negative thought, you need to fight it with the word of God, right? The moment your heart says that there is nobody for me, I am alone, I am depressed, you need to fight it with the word of God. The word of God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you till the end of this world. So as you place your faith more and more and engage and respond to these negative voices with the word of God, you will see that you are forming a strong foundation for yourself. And Matthew chapter 7, it talks about the wise man building his house on the rock. And this is the wise man who is building his house on the foundation of what God says about you. My dear friends, if there's something that you can learn from today is placing our life on what God says about us. And this is the most important key of walking in victory. Whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of the people around you? Or are you listening to the voice of the one who made you and the one who empowers you to walk in victory? Amen? Okay. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. The moment you have a thought which says that, or example, the moment you have a thought which is negative, you take that thought captive and bring it under the subjection of God's word. This takes time, this is a process, but the more you engage in this process, you will know that you're no longer living in misery. You're no longer living in defeat, but now you are living as an overcomer, as a person who is strong. Amen? And this is a training that we all need to do. This is the biggest spiritual warfare of winning the warfare in your mind. You see, everyone goes through this. Paul went through this. Peter went through this. Any saint you can name went through this. But it really depends on how strong you are in the word to come out of these things stronger. To come out of these things higher and the word of God gives us that capacity 
to live a life of victory. I want to end with this one thought. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. To be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Let's come back to the first few verses. It says, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. You see, you can change the attitude of your mind. Maybe your mind has been telling you that, see, you cannot do anything in your life. You failed, you've terribly failed again and again, you've disappointed people, but you need to renew the attitude of your mind according to what God says about you. And go and read the scriptures. As you meditate on these scriptures, these scriptures will give you life. John 6, 63 says, The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So as you're meditating on God's scripture, life is being released into your life. And that is what we need to live a life of victory. So, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. You know you need to carry a winner's attitude. Don't be defeated. The moment somebody comes and tells you a problem, be the person who creates the solution, right? There are many problem talkers, but there are only a few solution makers. And I want you, by the power of God's word, to become a solution maker in your area of influence. Amen? Let me end with this one last thought. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. This is also one way of increasing the capacity of our mind to think victorious thoughts. You know, even before you live a life of victory, you will start to have victorious thoughts. You will start to have thoughts of plenty. You will start to have thoughts of abundance even before you reach there because first, the change has to happen internally and then it manifests out. See, anything that happens in the kingdom of God starts inside. We are living an inside-out life. So as your soul is being convinced of the fact that you are a victorious person, everything in your environment will come down to that level where you will be fully convinced of this fact that I am a victorious person. No matter what people have said about you, I want you to start saying this out loud that I am a victorious person. And the more you believe in what God says and speak it with your mouth, the narrative will change. And when the narrative changes, the attitude of your mind changes. And when these things changes, you will see that victory will be an automatic thing in your life. Amen. I just want to lead you to a small prayer. So wherever you are, let's all just pray together and believe in what God says. And let us believe that as we do what we have heard, that our life will be backed by testimonies of victory. Heavenly Father, I just want to pray for everyone listening to my voice, Father. No matter where they have been and what they have done, Lord, maybe they have experienced defeat, lack, failures. But Father, I pray as they have heard your word today, Lord, which empowers them to walk in victory, Father, I pray that you will open doors for them to walk in victory, Father that their roots will go strong in the word of God and they will come out as victorious champions, Father. Let testimonies come of people walking in victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.